Thomas Lawrence from Raps on TV. We're here for the official press uh, weigh-in for the uh, Katie Taylor World Title Defence against Jessica McCaskill. Here with boxing pugilist Spencer Fearon and uh, super lightweight um, Ahara Davis. How are you both doing? You all right? I'm blessed. How are you no, feeling? Good. No, I'm just here trying to learn, to get a bit of knowledge, you know, from the knowledge, <laughs> you know, trying to learn a bit. And uh, yes, I've been listening to what he says. You see, I will talk all the time, like on the camera, I talk all the time. But whatever man here. I don't try to do it, I try to listen, I try to take them out of the camera. So uh, here's supporting a few of your boys on the card, uh, part of your stable of uh, yeah. great fighters with Tony Sims. Mm -hmm. uh, so a few of them, uh, Conor Ben's on the card, yeah. uh, are you looking forward to seeing him fight tomorrow night? Yeah, Conor Ben, Felix Cass, Ted Cheeseman, Joe Cordino. Looking forward to seeing them all get their wins, you know. And it'll be a good night out, it'll be a good night out watching the fight. And yeah, I love the so uh, Spencer, so a lot, the last uh, match from card of the year, how do you uh, sort of assess the year for boxing 2017? The, the year for boxing has been absolutely fantastic, come on. Just the mere fact of um, Andy Joshua, what, how spectacular, he was in a Klitschko fight. Um, you know what I mean? Keep on saying, like Les Brown says, like, when you get knocked down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Andy Joshua did exactly that. But they look at the wave of all the great fights that has happened over this year. In fact, we've been we've been overly treated. That's the mere fact that we see Andre Wood bow out at the top, right, uh, in a in a revenge match, but looking so superb. He was superb uh, against her guy Covenant. So it's been a great, great, great year for boxing, and it's only going to get better. We've had some upsets. Do you know what I mean? Just like oh, Howard Davis, you know what I mean? He had, a, he had a blip, you know what I mean? He just to brush himself off and try to come back in the game. This is boxing. So this will, this will make the thing so genial, makes it so special. And we've got to count our blessings or the things that, how things are going. And like, I can't wait for 2018 now because it's going to be hyped. And uh, touching on one of those upsets, we was here today, uh, the new super middleweight, IBF super middleweight champion, Kendall Truex, came over from America, defeated um, one of our own, James DeGale, in what was a devastating uh, defeat for James DeGale. Um, I, I suppose... Check this one. Check this one. Hard fights. Jarrell. Hard fight. Let's move on from Jarrell. Porky Medina. Hard fight. Lucien Boutin. Hard fight. Badu Jack, super hard fight. You can't be having him back to back to back. I've, I've just got four hard fights. Four hard fights back to back to back. The rest has been, it's been stagnated. You're trying to get ready to go and fight again. Then you suffer from injury. Then you're fighting the fact of injury as well. Timing looked off. I saw him in the press, in the press, a workout. Timing looked off, mate. So when I saw his timing look, I said, that timing looked a little bit off. I was reforming a couple guys. This guy said, timing looked a little bit off. Now, I guarantee you, the blame's gonna be on Jim McDonald's head. Watch, I guarantee you. And this is no disrespect to James, because James is a fantastic fighter, but you know what? Maybe he's actually happy in his life there. Do you know what I mean? He's made a lot of money in a short period of time. And maybe he's thinking like, boy, this sounds cool. And uh, Jim McDonald's one of the elite trainers in the game. Um, I suppose, do you think it might be a case of James need to reassess where he's at? And, uh, no, because, to... wait, 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 wait. When James had gone lost to George Groves, James Aguil was accepting the loss. He said, no, I didn't lose that fight as a robbery, right? And he said, I'm not leaving Jim McDonald's, right? Because he said, Jim was the guy, Jim was the guy that, that built him. And he was adamant, no, Jim's my guy. So don't blame Jim McDonald now because I don't think the game plan was, was, was wrong. Maybe I think it was a mental game plan. Like mentally, he was like, ah, oh, it's a walk in the park. Here's a guy that's lost to Jarrell. Here's a guy that's lost to um, Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs is a middleweight. I'm going to blast out this guy. And maybe took it for granted and came out second best. So another fight in the States on the weekend, Vasily Lomachenko uh, retiring Guillermo Rigondo on his stall, not coming out for the seventh round. Um, is Lomachenko unbeatable at uh, Super Featherweight? Lomachenko is a sorcerer. I'm telling you this now, I don't know what voodoo or magic, what dark arts, I don't know what the guy is working with, but he's working with it. Listen, that guy's, that guy's superb. Yeah. And the thing about it is this, we're going to say, oh, well, end of the day, look what happened. Like, Rogondo had to move up two weights to fight him. Oh, like, nobody wasn't overly complaining when one man, one Marquez moved up two weights to fight Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, right? But the difference is, and this is the difference, Floyd was up for two years. You're looking at somebody right now in, in, in Lomachenko that I believe should fight Mikey Garcia at lightweight just to say, okay, then I'm that, because he is that good, he's superb. 
Uh, so uh, moving on to you, Ahara. Um, you've got another one of your stable mates, Martin J. Ward, challenging for the European Super Featherweight title against Huli Gine. Um He's been around a while. He's obviously moved on from European. He's challenged for the world title. Is this going to be a stiff test for Martin J. Ward? And you see uh, him coming through it? To be honest, I don't know much about the other guy, but I know Martin Ward and I've seen Martin Ward in the gym. I've seen him training, sparring. He's, he's had a super long camp. Um, I think he, I know he'll win, you know, I've, I've seen him in the gym and I don't see any of these guys beating Martin Ward, so tomorrow he becomes European champ and, you know, more money in the bank. Uh, so top in the bill we've got Katie Taylor, a defender, yeah. WBA lightweight world title, Amer another American in yeah. Jessica McCaskill. Um, this is, um, I suppose, since turning professional, Katie sort of transcended the sport of women's boxing has become more apparent now that... Um, yeah. Well, it's her, and, her and Clarissa Shorts are doing fantastic. I ain't gonna lie, I think right. that girl is quite good looking. Yeah. The girl she's right? Yeah. I swear to way, I'm like, she's kind of good looking. You know, hey, I, this might guy. Give, I, might give, I might speak to Eddie after, you know. Give it a, <laughs> stick my number to <laughs> Don't involve me in that. But like I'm saying, I think that Katie Taylor's superb. She's got so much skill. And I'll say, pound for pound, as British boxers, she's she's up there as one of the, one of the best world champions that this country's got, irrespective that she's a female. She's bad, she's just wicked for boxing. I love her, yeah. seriously. I like watching how she fights. She dissects fights, she's got, she gives good angles, and she thinks. And because of that, she, she I mean, sky's the limit. But this girl, McCaskill, she's fighting, ain't no mug. Yeah. She can fight, apart from her horror things, so she, she's so beautiful, but she can fight. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. And now I've got to bounce, because I've got work to do. No worries, so cheers for that, Spencer, fingers. all the best, I've probably got a ticket on my car, but... Drive week, continue. Yeah, All right, yeah, so um, focus on you, uh, Hara. Um, obviously, since your loss to uh, Josh Taylor in the summer, you bounced back with a yeah. very explosive uh, win over Tom Farrell in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, again, going into the Lions' den, getting yeah. the job done. You know, you know, bouncing back as quickly as uh, possible and getting your your name back up there. So, yeah. in um, I think you were meant to be fighting December time on the Hay Bell. There was rumours of you to against be. Tommy Coyle. I was meant to be, but um, I ended up getting injured. But now I'm, I'm injury free. We're looking at a date, possibly February, March. Um, I find out later on today. I'll get a confirmed date for when I fight, just so I know when to start camp. I'm back in the gym now. I'm back sparring now. I've had, I've had a long break off, so I'm ready to start camp now. So whenever Eddie's ready to give me a date, you know, I'm ready to get it on. So I yeah, I don't really care who is against. I don't really get me. A, I don't care about the opponent. Tell me much how much I'm going to paid. When Eddie gives me a list, I'm like, listen, which one of these guys would I get paid the most for fighting? That's the guy I want. I don't care who the fuck he is, because I know what I can do. So if you can map three fights out for 2018, um, presuming that you keep moving up the ladder, stepping up, um, getting closer towards a shot at a, uh, say, past British level, or British yeah. level, there's uh, a lot of good fighters around the mix. Uh, what would you map out as three fights for um, 2018? I think possibly next fight. I think I want to fight Tommy Cole for my next fight. Just because we've been in talks and, you know, been going back and forth online. Like once I bang out Tommy Cole, I don't, I don't know who else there is, to, to be honest. It all depends on what Eddie says. I'd like to get Tommy Cole next. If not him, he's not really matter. So uh, Josh Taylor defended his um, well, uh, sorry, Josh what Taylor. Time? No, no, sorry. Josh Taylor, um, obviously moving up uh, the levels again. Had another uh, good fight the other week. What was your assessment of the fight? I didn't see the fight. No. Didn't don't want to talk about no. No, I don't, I don't mind talking about. It. I didn't. See, I didn't see the fight. I talk about anything. Yeah. I didn't see the fight. To be honest, he's gone his path and gone my path. When I get my chance again, blood will be spilled in his rightful place. Until until then, he won the fight. What can I say? Yeah. He won the fight. Um, I know me on my best day would have won the fight, but I wasn't on my best day uh, on July the 7th, so ain't nothing I can say, but you know, let him do his thing, I do my thing. But in the meantime, fuck him. So in, uh, just finally, in the domestic scene, we've got um, the likes of Tyro Nurse, Jack Catterall. Nurse just got his ass up, didn't he? Uh, yeah, by Cat 